Well, I suppose I'm uh, an, I'm an odd bod in the um, in the population movement in the whole questioning of human population because I come very very strongly from the Catholic tradition and we of course have a very bad reputation in that area. Uh, of course, the vast majority of Catholics in the developed world and for that matter uh, in the developing world uh, are not all that necessarily persuaded by the church's teaching on contraception. I mean, in Australia, for instance, Catholic fertility is lower than the national average, just slightly lower. In many ways, the religious traditions uh, can actually be harnessed and brought to bear on the whole question of human population. But one of the things that's really concerned me w for most of my life is really the loss of the natural world. My realization about population did come later. I visited China, um, I lived in the United States uh, for a number of years and it was then that I began to see the expansion of the number of human beings was what was causing the destruction everywhere you went. I gradually started to see the complexity of the population problem uh, and, and it is a profoundly complex problem and very difficult to deal with but the, the, the simple reality is that we can't go on like this. We, we have to do something about limiting ourselves because we've already at 7.7 .7 billion people more than twice the number of people who were here in 1950, we have become a feral species, and that's what's got to be confronted. So all of those value, things of value, friendship, love, affection, compassion, as the Dalai Lama would say, all of those things are profoundly important, but they are not, in a way, they will all be lost in a mad, overpopulated world and are already being lost in many places that are already overpopulated. Well, I've been speaking out about it for 30 years and no one's even noticed me. Um, I mean, yes, of course, people have read the books, um, but the Vatican doesn't get too uptight about this kind of stuff. They're, they're so preoccupied with maintaining their own power. I'm writing a book on population at the present moment, on the morality of population. Well, politicians, and here I include the Greens, uh, are cowards with regard to this issue. You get the a rare exception. It was when I was working for the ABC I became quite aware of the population issue. I mean, I'd been thinking about it a lot before. I didn't want to get tied up with anti-immigrant groups. I mean, I was quite aware of them. They'd picked up, I think, when I was on air on the ABC that, um, that I had some reservations about uh, the numbers of immigrants coming into the country and so on and so forth. And so I started getting these letters of, you know, oh, you're on our side. Well, I had a good look at them and thought to myself, no, I'm not on your side. Because what I needed was, I needed to be with a group of, um, a much wider group of people, above all a group of scientists, who'd looked at the big picture here, who'd looked at the, the, the real issues that go to make up the population issue. And so, um, Somehow or other, I, I came across SPA, I joined very, very happily because, it, it, because here I met a group of people who were not rat bags, who were not one issue types, uh, but who were people uh, who understood the complexity of the problem. And I, and I think that is SPA's great strength. Um, I became the, the well-known Catholic who joined, you see, and so I think that uh, uh, I, w I was kind of useful that way, and I suppose as a patron I still am useful because I'm a well-known Catholic. The pro-growth brigade, when the, their arguments fall flat, they then start to retreat to the race, you know, well, if you don't want, if you don't welcome every uh, comer, then you're somehow a racist, or you support uh, isolation of people on Nauru, you're anti-immigrant or you're anti-multicultural. Um, I think if you make a stand in society, you're going to cop that, whether you like it or lump it. Uh, because when people, it's, it's like the old thing when they call you a Nazi or when they call you a fascist, that means they haven't got an argument. That means that they haven't got anything rational to say. If, um, if they call you uh, me a racist, I always say, well, strange you call me a racist because I belong to the most multicultural organization and firm supporter of the largest multicultural organization in the world, the Catholic Church. I think it's important 
that people who are committed to important fundamental human issues like population, they, you need, if you like, community to be able to do something about that. You need to be able to be with people of like mind. The great thing about SPA, I think, is you join a group of people who come from right across the spectrum. Most are probably from, if you like, the scientific, more rational end of the spectrum. But I do think it's important, and this is where if there are people of faith watching, I would simply say to you, you know, this is an important moral issue. This, this is not some kind of scientific or uh, demographic issue. This is a moral issue because it is about the future of the world we live in. It is about God's creation. And so therefore I think that I, I would certainly encourage people of faith to join. Um, the other good thing about it is that your presuppositions will be challenged. Um, and I've always thought that's a good thing, not a bad thing. I really think that's the nature of the essence of democracy. The people, you know, we don't agree on everything, but we do find issues that we think are profoundly important and we're pre prepared to stand together on that. And the great strength we have is our difference. One thing that, um, that I've always thought about, about SPA, uh, in a country where the population question is constantly pushed out of public discourse, where it is constantly pushed under the carpet, SPA is the one organisation in the country that in a rational, sensible way has kept that issue on, uh, on the agenda. Uh, I mean, SPA people write to the paper, SPA people write to their politicians, SPA people tackle decision makers. Uh, I, I, I actually think that that's the great strength of the organisation and that's the thing that SPA, it's a continuous thing. I mean, SPA's not a spectacular org. We don't, we don't have spectacular successes um, be, because this is not a, a, an issue that brings spectacular successes. It's like a dog with a bone issue. It's like um, an issue that demands consistency, that demands people who are prepared you know, to keep at it. Uh, and I think that's how real change occurs. Real, real change doesn't occur, uh, you know, through, you know, something that becomes a media sensation. I've worked in media. If, you, if we had any decent editors left in media, they would be choosing these much deeper issues, not the sensational issues. Um, but what SPA does is it keeps this issue on the agenda and God knows it needs to be kept on the agenda.